All right, folks, thanks for joining me. We are going to weather the storm today, and we are going to give you some great information. The one question I get asked the most, should I start off with side imaging, or should I start off with live scope? This is a big question a lot of people have, and me and Marcus are going to be in the boat today, put some big slabs in it, and we're going to help you walk you through that decision-making process. Which one should you start off first? Do me a favor, if you like this type of content, subscribe. Thanks for watching, let's get her done. What's up folks? Today, me and Marcus are gonna answer the question, which should you get first? Side imaging or live scope? Live scope. <laughs> it's already been decided. <laughs> We're gonna talk about it today, the, the, the positives and the negatives of each one and what you should be doing if you're, gonna, if you're getting your first electronic piece of equipment on your boat. So, live scope or side imaging? Which one should you get first? That's for answer today. Let's go, man. I want to fish. <laughs> Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. So, one of the most important things about side imaging, if that is the choice that you make, that's what you want to get first. And I'll tell you, I'm going to go through the advantages of that. But make sure you get the biggest screen possible. Not a five inch screen. Yeah, you might be able to pick up structure, but you'll never pick up fish. I mean, it just, it'd be very difficult. Um, the biggest screen, regardless, whether you choose live scope or side imaging for that matter, the biggest screen you can afford is what you need to get in your boat. So if you think you might be able to get the 10 inch, but, but you, you see this nine inch screen deal out there, folks, go with the 10 inch. I'm just telling you right now, it's money saved because you will trade in that nine inch wanting the 10 or 12 inch monitors for these, uh, types of uh, systems, side imaging or live scope. There's a fish there. Pro release, pro release for Marcus. First fish of the day is kind of a small fish, but still a lot of fun. So let's talk about uh, the advantages of getting side imaging. So if you're thinking about side imaging, let me get you over here. Uh, Marcus put in a, that's a small fish too, but anyway, we're battling some major wins today. Hey, uh, so here's the advantage of side imaging. Fast and it can find structure. So if you're going to a new lake or a big lake, that's the struct, that's the, the unit that you definitely want because you can scan coves, shorelines much faster with side imaging and mark those structures and then go back with live scope. So that's definitely the advantage of side imaging. Now, without a doubt, let's talk about the disadvantages. You have to learn how to read side imaging. A lot of people have come accustomed now with live scope where it's just a plug and play and you're good to go and it's really simple to read. Whereas side imaging, there's some tweaks. So I'll go through my settings here on this, on this episode so that you can see what they are. But if you're going to go to bigger lakes, new lakes, then I think side imaging is a must. Got a pile of small fish. What we got here? 55 degree water temps. Probably about the same air temp. Maybe, I don't know. Just out here having a good time with my buddy Matt. So the advantage of live scope is that there is no going back to checking whether or not there's fish. You can, you can scan a, a shoreline. It's gonna take a lot more time, a lot more trolling motor power, but it's also gonna be a lot more, a lot more uh, realistic. I mean, you're gonna get an idea whether it's big fish, small fish, are there fish there, that type of thing. So me and Marcus talked about it on the way here you know, what would you get? Because Marcus is in kind of in the, the same market. He wants to know whether he should get a side imaging or a live scope. And uh, he believes, you know, live scope. But I think for him, it's perfect. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Live scope, getting it first would be because you have a smaller boat. 
you don't plan on going to any of the bigger lakes. So nine, nine lakes around in Southern Illinois, there's a lot of them. He could easily mark though. He already has a ton of marks on those lakes. So him getting a live scope first would probably be, I would suggest that he, he thinks the same way. Um, but if you have a bigger boat, you plan on doing some traveling, you plan on going to see some bigger lakes, side imaging for sure. Live scope, I'll tell you, just like I said earlier today, biggest screen you could possibly get. I'm a big fan of the, if you want to go spend less, the 1022 or the 1222. If you want to get the top of the line, you go with the 8612, um, those type of units. But either way, they're going to produce great pictures. I'll show you some live, um, some active captain. All right, so what we want to show you is the difference between live, live scope and side imaging. So we're scanning this whole side right here and we found some structure while we were searching. Definitely a lot of fish on it. And uh, we want to show you the difference between the two. So I'm going to bring uh, active captain, captain up here. So what we would do is we'd go high speed 10 and we'd just start sweeping at 50 to 70 foot forward with live scope. That's how we search with live scope. And we found it to be pretty effective in Branson. Uh, although you certainly still could do it a lot quicker with side imaging, but we like it because now we don't have to go back and look for the fish. We know whether or not we've got it. So I'm going to put it on active captain. One, two, three, it's on. And as you can see, we're out to 60 feet right now. And we're just kind of sweeping. This is what we would do if we were searching this, this shoreline for the first time, as we did just earlier. So there it is. I'd scroll down. And there's your mark right there. So I'm slowing up. And although that's right underneath the boat, that just gives you an idea how you would search with live scope and i think it's pretty effective i mean it's slower than <laughs> side imaging but if you're going to fish smaller lakes that's certainly an easy way to scan the shoreline so let's go we're going to show you this exact same spot now on side imaging so you can see the difference all right so before we get started let me just go through my setting i like the amber color i like 70 foot left 70 foot right that's my favorite uh I've got my speed, I believe, set up at four, but so my speed, chart speed is set up at five. 70 foot left, right. Contrast is at 16, and my sensitivity is at nine. Now, I, you do have to tweak that when you go to different legs. I don't tweak it that much just because you start to learn how to read side imaging, but those are my settings on side imaging. This is the water column underneath the boat. This is the 70 feet starting at this point. So side imaging becomes way more effective if you're shooting it if you're catching stuff way out of here you can really see the structure out here but as you get closer it really becomes a little bit more difficult so when we were at kentucky lake this year you know i had wade in here and he was doing the side imaging and marking stuff i was up at live scope scanning everything in front so the combination of both of them actually works very well but again if you're going to go to big lakes new lakes you definitely want to probably start with a side imaging unit this is a 10 inch unit right here generation three i don't believe there's a big difference between the two and the three or the i haven't seen a four yet to be honest with you but i think a two is perfect so you can get into a hummingbird si unit fairly inexpensively so let's check out that um, so another thing is my favorite buttons are set up where i have the map is number one number two is going to be side imaging and number three is going to have map and side imaging so i can see them both together so there's two pieces right there those two maybe yep there it is underneath the boat there it is underneath the boat so i wonder if even scanning it out less that's it right there so i think the without a doubt side imaging struggles with getting you know pvc and smaller marks identified whereas you know live scope is picking that stuff up very quickly and we know that it's the details so this is you know we're, we're going to pick up big structures we're going to mark small stuff as, as we can as you see them but uh marcus just made a point he goes would you have stopped for that if we were using side imaging and probably not 
I'd be looking for something bigger. I'd be looking for uh, black shadows, which I always do in the winter time. If those fish are tucked tight to a structure, it's gonna be really difficult for you to see those fish on side imaging. My favorite spot on Egypt. Biggest fish of the day. Live scopes the winner. Man, that was fun. So yes, we think that if you were to get one or the other, if you only had a certain amount of dollars in your pocket, live scope is without a doubt the option we would go to first. Um, you can take everything else into the account, new lakes, size of lakes, all those great things, but live scope brings an, enjoy, an enjoyment to the sport that plain and simply uh, side imaging cannot and it's just a game changer. So we vote, at least from our perspective, and again, not everybody's the same, we would vote live scope. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for joining me. My big fish of the day. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing partnered up with these fantastic companies.